No, 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 you've gone too far, Bradley, you've gone too far. Ewa Park's on the left-hand side. I'm looking at it right now. Yeah, you go past McDonald's. You go past McDonald's. I know it's been a couple of weeks. No, 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 it's on Thursday. Not Saturday, so be there Thursday and make sure you bring your A-game. Sky's going to be there. That's right, bring, bring your good stuff. What? No, 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 you can't bring her. You can't bring her. The gaffer will be pissed. That's right, folks, back once again with another match preview. This time, Captain Down to the next cup final for Blackburn up against Bradford City at Ewood Park. We'll talk more about that match in just one second. But if you're new, hit the subscribe button to keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. Let's get into the nitty gritty time. Every game really, really matters. And this weekend, there were a lot of the League One teams were in action, which did affect the state of play of the league table. We are now down to third. And if the season were to end today, we will be stuck in the playoffs. But we are the ones that have a game in hand on Shrewsbury this time. Hopefully, we could take advantage of that and get ourselves back to the top of the table. So come Thursday night, under the lights and the sky cameras, it'll be Blackburn Rovers up against Bradford City at Ewood Park. The match takes place Thursday last season. Bradford City finished fifth. In League One, and the current top goal scorer is Charlie Wyke. Uh, he has a few goals to his name. Simon Grayson is the man pulling the strings at the moment at Bradford City. He took over from Stuart McCall, who was sacked a few uh, a couple of months ago, I believe now. Um, and now the, the roles and responsibilities lie on Simon Grayson, former Rover as well. So that adds a little bit of extra spice to it. They currently find themselves 10th in the table. Rovers, like I said, are in third place. And over the years, the two sides, Blackburn and Rovers and Bradford City, have met 38 times. Rovers getting the better of them 20 times, only losing 11. And the two sides have drawn seven times between, in all competitions and in all grounds. Over the last five meetings at Ewood Park, looks like this. Good bit of form for Blackburn Rovers coming into this. Uh, they've yet to lose. Well, they haven't lost in the last five meetings, should I say. And the last time that these two teams met at Ewood Park was all the way back in January the 1st, 1990, in the old league division two. It ended up 2-2. Good bit of form. Hopefully Rovers can add another win to it because I really, really want us to uh, get ourselves back into the automatic promotion places uh, because I can't, I don't think my heart can take it if it goes um, back down into if we lose it or stumble or whatever. Anyway, let's talk more, more about the match itself. Let's take a look at my predicted start 11 for the Rovers. Uh, Ryan and Goal, Bennett, Mulgrew, Lenehan, Williams, Smallwood, Evans, Dak, Armstrong, Antonson, and or Antonson, or Antonson. I'm not sure. Someone, someone's corrected me in the past. I've already forgotten. And uh, Danny Graham up front. Let's take a look at the statistics. Top of the pops. Bradley Dyke with 16 goals. Then in second place is Danny Graham with 15. Then Charlie Mulgrew still in third place with 12 goals. And right in fourth place, Dominic Samuel still with eight goals. He's yet to score in a long, long, long time. Hopefully, maybe that will change on Thursday into the discipline. Richie Smallwood still on nine yellows. Bennett's there with eight. Evans has seven. Williams has six into the Reds. The column that you don't want to be in. Elliot Bennett's still in there with two. Samuel's in there with one. And Lewis Travis also has one. As for the last five games for Blackburn Rovers, they look like this. Rovers winning 3-0 at Ewood Park up against Blackpool. Obviously, we were supposed to play Gillingham between then and now. Uh, and that, got, that game got canned. And uh, a lot of... Uh, grumpy Rovers fans and players made the long trip all the way down to Gillingham to no avail. So uh, frustrating times all around for Rovers. Hopefully this hiatus or little brief resting period won't come to bite us in the backside. We'll talk more about that in a bit. Before that, Sunday the 4th of March, Rovers held uh, Wigan 2-2 at Ewood Park. Battle at the top there. Uh, before that, AFC Wimbledon hosted Rovers. We came out 3-0 winners. 24th of February, we beat Walsall at their place and we wrapped it up last time in front of the cameras, Monday the 19th of February, 2-0 winners. Now for our guests, this is how I feel they line up with Simon Grayson's starting 11. Doyle in goal, McMahon, Kilgallen, Law, Warnock, Gilead, McCartan, Vince Lock, Guy, Polion and Knight Purcell. Couple ex-rovers in there with Stephen Warnock and Matt Kilgallen. Uh, we were also linked with McMahon, Tony McMahon, uh, over the summer. That never materialised. And, uh, yeah, it's, I'm not sure that this is the, the, the attire, the, the jerseys that they'll wear, but 
Uh, you never know. It might be something similar. Let's take a look at the statistics for Bradford City. There we are. Charlie White with 13 goals. Polion's in there with seven. Taylor's got six. Vincent's got five. Into the discipline. McMahon's got nine. Vincent's got nine. Knight Percival's got six. And uh, Timothy Diang, I think his name is, has six yellows. As for the Reds, White's got two. Kilgallen's got one. Chickson's got one. And Vincent has one. Into the form book. Last time out, they beat said Gillingham 1-0 at uh, Valley Parade before losing to Doncaster Rovers uh, uh, Monday the 19th of March at Keep Moat, I believe that's where they play. Wednesday the 14th of March, Bradford got beat by Wigan. Uh, before that, they lost to Plymouth at, on the road. And they, before that, all the way on 13th of February, they were held to a 1-1 draw by Charlton at the Valley. Let's take a look at the last weekend's results. Obviously, Blackburn were not playing, but I've circled a couple of the big ones that we kept an eye on. I was watching uh, these uh, unfold on the Sky Sports News. I was a little bit optimistic with the Shrewsbury game, especially going into the second half, nil-nil. And then when uh, they did take the lead and then they lost a player. So I was thinking maybe, just maybe, Wimbledon would do us a solid and get us uh, a point. Because that's all we need right now. We need them to stumble up one more time and Blackburn Rovers to win. I, we, I need I need myself for my own heart Blackburn Rovers because I am very passionate and I get very worked up and angry if if things don't go our way and if and if we do not get promoted if we end up in the playoffs just in the playoffs first and foremost I'm going to be very upset and angry and I don't want to be I want to be very happy come the first week of May I want to be out of control, happy, piss my pants happy. That's how happy I want to be. Uh, I cannot, I cannot get my mind around the playoffs. Uh, so we need, we need uh, a favour from the next team to step it up and make Shrewsbury not win. So if they were not to win, they maybe let's say they get 79 points. Blackburn Rovers win against Bradford. We go 79 points with the game in hand. Um, and I just want a little bit of wiggle room. Just a little bit of wiggle room to maybe, if we do slip up, to correct it for the next game. That's, that's just my preference. Not really fussed about the championship. Just want the top two. Moving forward, let's take a look at the upcoming fixtures this Easter weekend. There's actually a lot of football going on uh, for all teams, especially Blackburn. We've got two games. First, on Thursday night, when we take against, obviously, Bradford City. That's what we're talking about. And on Friday, let's take a look at the games on Friday. I've circled the ones that really matter. Wigan, Host, Oldham. And Oldham currently find themselves, I've put a little arrow indicator to where they are on the table. They are 20. If they are fighting for their lives, uh, they do have a couple of games in hand over Wimbledon and Warsaw. So I'm hoping Richie Wellens has done his homework and is going to start to do us a favour and take a couple of points off Wigan. But I'm not too fussed. I'm not really too fussed about them. Uh, the game I really want is Watchdale. And I mentioned this to... Uh, I did a tweet a couple couple days ago. I thought this was the time that those two teams were, teams were uh, playing. Because Keith Hill was the manager of Rochdale. He bleeds blue and white. And I think he was once, I, I know for a fact, he was linked to the Rovers job prior to Owen Coyle. So I'm hoping he can get his boys rallied up for this one and uh, take some points off of Shrewsbury. And that would be Friday. Got to keep an eye on that game as that uh, develops on Friday, on Good Friday. Uh, there's other games, but we'll talk more about those next week. But let's take a look at the form book uh, and a grand, grand scheme of things uh, for the whole division. We currently find ourselves third, uh, third best home form in the table in the last eight games. We've yet to lose out of the past eight, but realistically, I don't want to even think about a draw. As for the away team, away form, Bradford currently find themselves 22nd in the form table. Uh, so they've only won one out of the past eight on the row. So one player's ability, he often gets overlooked when it comes to man of the match performances, and that is Richard Smallwood. Here is the gaffer talking about how crucial he is to the makeup of this League One Blackburn Rovers team. Well, it's just the rate they were coming early in the season, I suppose, when he was trying to stamp his mark on the club and on the team and, um, and you know, help us come through a, a difficult start to the season, I think. Uh, you know, did we lose four of the first 11 games or something like that? You know, it's, I think the intensity that Richie plays that was there, we've been hurting him as it was everybody, but, um, um, you know, shown great discipline over the last 13 games because I, I haven't noticed a marked 
come down in his performance level or his energy levels or his intensity to win the ball back. Um, probably just that little detail of going right through a challenge or knowing when you can nick the ball or you're not going to nick the ball. So it is, I would hope it'd be like a, not a lesson to Richie, but a, an education for him to know that he can play his robust style of front foot football without constantly picking up bookings um, and still be very effective. <laughs> um, yeah, listen, he, he was brought in to do a specific job really. I think, you know, we lost we lost Jason Lowe, who, who is a, a, a type of footballer that would try and win the ball back for us. We lost Guthrie as well, who, who would move the ball around the pitch for us. Um, Richie can do a bit of both of that. He can. Um, he's got things that he needs to still develop, as all footballers do. You know, bottom line, here we are playing in League One. He's not. He's not Richie Smallwood playing in the Premier League every week, earning hundred grand a week. He's. He's. He's at Blackburn Rovers at this moment in League One, making a living for his family. He's, um, but what he brings is a fantastic desire to improve himself, to help the team win football matches. He's a, he's a diamond of a, of a human being, a, a great lad, and um, yes, and he, he deserves all he gets as he, as he goes along in his career, hopefully helping this club get out of this division this, this season, and then he has to test himself in the Championship. He's been there before, it, it's, he was a younger player then, I think, when I had him at Middlesbrough, and um, it would be a, you know, a, a challenge, a great challenge for Richie to, to, to go into the next league and prove that he can do what he's done this season in this division in the next league with, with players who might be a little bit cleverer, a little bit stronger, a little bit faster. Um, that's the challenge for all footballers to, to make the step up. He's the same, you know, I listen, he, he, he comes practically from around the corner where I come from. He's in the same town, he's, uh, his family literally hundreds of yards away, not miles and miles away from where I was born and bred and brought up and uh, Richie's from that sort of stock. Um, I, I, I know his personality, I know his, the hard work and values of what his life will be about and uh, that's what we get every day. He's, he's a, as I said, he's, he's got the right work ethic but he's got the right morals and standards of how he lives his life and what he does and um, and when you've got people who you know what you're getting from every day, you, uh, it gives you a chance to build. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, I've always said, haven't I? It's a, football is about a balance. Teams about the chemistry of, 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 you know, I've called it soldiers and artists. You know, Richie falls into that soldiers character uh, who, um, who works extremely hard to allow the more creative players to to hurt the top end of the pitch. Um, he's got good discipline. He understands how we want to play, how we, what we do when the ball's in advanced areas and what positions you need to be taking up to stop counter-attack against you and, and where you should be on the pitch. He's, he's working very, very hard at his game and um, yeah, that's, I'm, I'm delighted Richie Smallwood. I'm, I'm, hopefully he's enjoying the season. He's played a lot of football this year and um, you know, hopefully another, I don't know how many weeks it is, six or seven weeks and he can have a good rest and, and, and hopefully get himself ready for the next league up and the next challenge. But we've still got a lot of work to do between now and then. Now you've heard a little bit of what I've had to say about the match. What the fans been saying on social media? Well, no, to be honest with you, not much. I haven't really looked too deep into it, but on the BRFCS forum, a lot of fans are giving their opinion, such as Darren Rover. The Good Friday Eve game, courtesy of Sky, is the first of a series of five games in 12 games. We'll start the game in third place, and I consider it imperative that we as supporters are out in force and verish... Uh, on Thursday night and proved to be that extra man. I think that we need at least four wins and a draw from the 12-day montage. On a personal note, my wife's joining me at Ewood for the first time in a while and the last time she watched Rovers play Bradford was away on the day of George Courtney's reintroduction to Rovers. We have to win. Come on, you blues. Uh, Tom said this, pretty much a must win to get us back above Shrewsbury into the top two, putting the onus back on them to win on Saturday. Not an easy game, but one you would expect to be winning. As for Rover, Sean, this could ruin Easter. Let's hope the lads have the balls for it. Chally Rover said this. My team, Raya, Lenehan, Mulgrew, Williams, Bennett, Evans, Smallwood, Bell, Dak, Graham, Armstrong. As for Cami 100 said this. My only slight concern is that by the time we play the game, it will be 19 days since we played our last game. Just hope that we haven't lost some of the sharpness we had prior to this break. I'm hoping the gaff has been been at the players that have not been on international duty and made sure that they've been uh, kept rust free. Meanwhile, Crimp Shrine said this: I think Grayson will come for a nil-nil draw. Bradford have a really bad run, but can still make the playoffs. They'll be happy with a point that you would after winning today. 
and today he's on about the Gillingham game. If they do come to defend, it could be a tricky night. Meanwhile, Philip L. Now, he's getting away with this one here. But usually, I charge for advertising space because he's taken up a whole stinking screen. Anyway, gosh, what's this? My football team playing a game? What's a novelty? Read the match report of Bradford 1, Gillingham nil. For the statistics, Gillingham were, were comfortably ahead. The Jules had one of those first halves, which they should have been leading at halftime by two, and having a four-goal margin wouldn't have flattered them. We know what's coming they, when they play us. They'll fluke one against the run of play, but missed loads of chances and found the Bantams keep it in inspired form. Bradford scored in the 48th minute and confidence came flooding back, so could easily have got a second. I was going to suggest that Lightning is going to strike twice, except Rovers will probably be far too match rusty to overrun them in either half. The lads will probably need to reintroduce themselves to each other in the first half. Whatever happens, we'll be facing opponents who have football's X factor, a new boss, a confidence that gives... Uh, that wins gives you motivation because for Bradford, yesterday's results were perfect for reviving their playoff hopes, plus a relief at discovering that they can still play football after experiencing the worst run of form by any club in the 92. Expecting a very hard fought tight game, but there are going to be no gimmies in this last nine fixtures. Just hope Moby doesn't overthink his preparation, stop the lads from looking for fried bantam uh, from the first whistle to the last. Not making any forecast to beyond saying this one. Like every remaining fixture until automatic promotion is secured is a must win. Indeed it is. Simon Garner 194 said we simply can't afford to drop any points. We have to be up for every game now. There is no excuses. 2-1 and he's even predicted 14,550 people to show their faces. And Tom Phil seems the modern way at this level now. Grayson said the other night we when asked if he was now finding a system that suit the players he's got that he didn't have one in mind but wanted to tailor it to each different game. You, you can part understand it, but I'm not a fan of swapping and changing every game. I don't think there is a need for that if you're good enough at what you do with your strongest 11. Then stick to that and make them masters of it. Sorry, but swapping systems all the time doesn't bode well for clean sheets over a season, in my opinion. But if your squad is strong enough to keep scoring regardless, you'll get away with it, which is what we've done at times. I, cannot, I can't see Tony Mowbray altering his approach now but we are entering the championship rounds so to speak so it's live by the sword or die by it now as for 1864 roverite said this keep it simple we'll take a one nil win all day long it's all that's required it is a win for us we'll put us back top of the pops shrewsbury wigan play later on in the easter weekend over the years number players have played for blackburn rovers and bradford city you saw three at the time when Blackburn played at Valley Parade and in now at Ewood Park. Let's take a look at these guys. Keith Gillespie. That's right. The guy who joined us. Part exchange for... Who, do, who did we sell them? Who did we sell? Was it Alan Shearer? Was it part of the Alan Shearer deal? I can't remember. But anyway, Keith Gillespie. What's all the blue and white hearts? No, he wasn't. He wasn't. Or was he? I can't remember if we've gone for Manchester United or if we've gotten from Newcastle. Either way, he once played for Blackburn Rovers in blue-white halves. He also donned the uh, orange and maroon of Bradford City. As for this guy, Billy McKinley, defensive midfielder, also played for Bradford City. Now check this snapshot out of Josh Morris. That's right, Josh Morris on the left-hand side when he played for Blackburn Rovers. He also played for Bradford City and joining him in the picture, trying to steal the limelight, is the long-haired Lothario Bradley Dack. Yes, what a player. What a man. Now, you've heard a little bit what I've had to say about the match. You've heard a little bit what the fans have been saying about the match. Just scrap it, forget it, doesn't really matter. What really, really matters is what Caster Cat thinks will happen this weekend, or this Easter weekend, or this Thursday, between Blackburn Rovers and Bradford City. Let's take a look. Folks, if you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button and keep your bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. I'm also on Twitter and Facebook. Links to those places are in the description below. Uh, yeah, it's been a long time coming, this game. Uh, I'm feeling rusty. I don't know what the players are going to be like. I'm just hoping they bring their A game. And I'm hoping for a massive three points to get us back to the top of the pops. Anyway, 
Till next time, thumbs up, subscribe. Ciao for now. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit that subscribe button. It'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. But if you want to check out something completely different, head over to my other YouTube channel. You do that by pressing the button right there. If you want to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, details are in the description below. So until next time, thumbs up, subscribe.